Let's take a look at an exercise that is titled Computation of Variable Cost Variances. Now, if you don't want to sit through all of this, um, you know, there are other videos where we where we do pieces of this. And so this is a this video, what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at uh, a grand total of I guess it's it's, it should be, basically, it's four variances. Now, we have a couple of materials that we're going to be using, so that that would knock that up to, I guess, about six uh, variances in total. And so, um, you know, it's a materials price and quantity variance exercise, as well as a labor rate and efficiency uh, variance exercise. And, and I've made videos on those topics uh, you know, individually before, and, and I'm not the only one. So, um, so that's what we're dealing with. Uh, I will men one mention want to mention one thing. Uh, this particular exercise does not cover variable overhead variances. So, if you're needing that, the mechanics of it, uh, of variable um, cost variances, is is very, very similar to uh, direct uh, labor variances. Uh, and, and I would argue that they're all about the same. Uh, but anyway, uh, that is not explicitly covered in this video, just materials and labor. So we have some information for Tyler Company for the month of September. And notice that they have direct materials these are our standard amounts up here for materials. So we've got uh, a material A and B. And for A, we need four units. That is the standard of material. And the standard cost for that material is $2 a unit. And then for uh, material B, just one unit with a standard cost of $3. All right. And then for labor, we have our standard as three hours per unit at a rate of $8 per hour. So these are our standards. And then we have to be careful here that we make sure we always use the right numbers. We're going to go ahead and for, for materials, we want to make sure that we use the data under materials purchased. Um, and we, we're going to have to use that in tandem with uh, the materials used. And so we have to be very, very careful here that we use the right numbers. And so we'll look at how to, to do that. Okay, so let's see what they're wanting from us here. And then as we go through this, hopefully this will um, make a little more sense. I'm going to run through this fairly quickly so that the video doesn't get too long. But I want to first look and see what they're wanting from us. So it looks like, again, we have two variances uh, for um, materials, uh, price and quantity variance. And then all we have to do is just the labor variance here. So we're going to fill in uh, one, two, three, four, five, six boxes with a dollar figure. And then we have to indicate whether each of these variances is uh, favorable or unfavorable. Notice that we do not have to calculate total variances for materials and labor. But once we have all of this information, we could absolutely do that and it wouldn't be uh, difficult at all. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started then. The first item I'm going to start with is material A and the materials price variance. Okay, now if you have a textbook on this, um, your textbooks will use three-way and four-way and, and two-way analysis um, and they'll you know use a bunch of diagramming and all this kind of stuff and and that's that's fine um, but that's not how I'm going to to do this what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what I think is a more uh, oh common sense approach so Remember, the first thing that we're looking at is a price variance for material A. So the first thing that I would do personally is I would come here and I'd say, okay, what is the price standard? And that's $2. And then I would say, okay, what was the actual price paid? And we'll find that under materials purchased. Well, that's 205 
So what I want you to recognize here is before we calculate anything, we should immediately recognize that this is going to be an unfavorable variance because we paid more than the standard. Okay? Paid more than the standard. So um, the formula for materials price variance essentially becomes, um, you know, actual uh, price paid minus uh, standard price per unit times actual amount of materials used. So that would be $2.05 is our actual minus $2. We have this as a positive number here, which means our actual was more, so that's not good. And we just merely multiply that by the actual, not the standard, the actual amount of materials used. And now we have a figure of 187.50. Okay. We've got that. Okay. And now we're going to do the exact same thing for material B. So notice that the standard is $3 and the actual amount paid was $3.10. Following the exact same thing that we did for material A, we're going to take the difference between those two amounts and multiply it by the actual amount of materials used. So again, our actual price paid was $3.10 minus the standard of $3 is 10 cents, and we're going to multiply that by the actual amount of uh, materials used for material B, and we come up with $90.50. And, and also, I didn't do this for, for material B, but again, we knew this was going to be an, an unfavorable variance because we paid more than the standard. Okay, so we could have actually done that uh, right off the bat as well, and then calculated the $90.50. Okay, so materials uh, quantity variance. So what we have to do here um, is we have to uh, figure out what the standard is. Okay, we know that we used 3,750 uh let's see here, units of raw material A, and we know that we used 905 units of material B, but what was the standard, okay? And so what we have to do here is we have to take this for material A, we have to take this four units, and we have to multiply it by this 900 here. So I'm going to do that just to show you what the answer is. So it's 3,600. Okay, so what we would say is that if we made, if we had production output of 900 units, we would expect to use 3,600 pounds, or 3,600 units rather, of uh, material A. That's not what happened. So we're going to do something uh, not completely dissimilar. We're going to take this 3,750, that is our actual, and we're going to subtract from that the standard, which was 3,600. Okay, now, at this point, and really before this, we should know that this is going to produce an unfavorable variance because we used more 3,750 units than the standard of 3,600, 900 times 4. Okay. Where we're going to be a little, do something a little bit different is we're going to take that 150 and we're going to multiply it by the standard price. Okay, so times 2, and that gives us 300. And that is an unfavorable variance. Notice that they did not put dollar signs here. Uh, one thing that um, students have done in the past is they'll, because there's not a dollar sign here, they'll put this in as 150, which is the, the number of units that were unfavorable. Materials quantity variance 
is a dollar figure. So you probably already knew that, but just in case. And then so for material B, we're going to do the exact same thing. We made 900 units. We would, you know, technically multiply this 900 times 1, which is 900, and compare it to what we actually used. So again, actual material used minus the standard, which just so happens to be 900 because it was one unit per one unit of materials per finished uh, per unit of finished goods. So minus 900 equals 5. So this is going to be an unfavorable variance because we used more than the standard. And then we're going to multiply that by the standard cost of $3. Whoops, so I did something wrong there. So it was 905 minus 900 equals 5 times the standard cost per unit of 3, and that is $15. And that will be an unfavorable variance. Okay. And so we could now, you know, we could calculate our total materials uh, variance. And it would be very, very easy because since all of them were unfavorable, all we would have to do is just add everything up. If we had a favorable in there somewhere, we would have to, you know, add all the unfavorables up and then net it against the favorable. But if we did that in this particular uh, example, we could just add all of these four uh, totals up and then and then put a U beside it and we would be correct. All right, uh, determine the labor rate and efficiency variances. Okay, so we've got our labor rate variance first. So let's see here. Let's see here. Okay, uh, direct labor. Uh, this is our standard here, $8 per hour. This is the direct labor used here. And for the rate variance, all we have to do is compare the actual rate of $8.10 and subtract out the standard of $8. Again, the actual rate paid was more than the expected standard rate of $8. So this is going to produce an unfavorable variance for this item. Okay, so uh, just as we did before, whenever we looked at the materials price variances, we took that difference and we multiplied it by actual materials used. Well, now we're going to take our $0.10, cents, $8.10 actual minus $8 uh, standard rate, and we're going to multiply that by the actual hours used of 2000 690 and that produces an actual dollar figure of $269. Okay. Now for the efficiency variance, we're going to do the exact same thing. It's very similar to what we did for material A. We took the uh, units of production and we say, okay, if I were to make 900 units, how many direct labor hours would I expect to use? Okay, so 900, and I would expect each one of those to take three hours, so times three is 2,700, okay? We actually use 2,690, so 2,690 minus the 2,700 standard produces negative 10. Okay, so we used 2690, we expected uh, 2700. So this is going to be a favorable variance. Okay. And then I'm going to clear that out and put in 10 because I didn't like that negative number there. And then all I have to do is I want to take this 10, which is the number of hours that we were more efficient than what we expected, and I'm going to multiply it by the standard rate of $8 per hour and I end up with 80, okay? And so if, if I were then to, if I wanted to then compute a total labor uh, variance, I would just take the 269, this is how I would do it, I would subtract the 80 from it and come up with 189, 
and it would be it would be a total uh, unfavorable variance of 189. We didn't have to do that. Okay, this video is getting a bit long, so I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks for watching.